All right, we're going to um, create our graphing inequalities foldable. It's light pink. We're going to have this inequalities foldable along with our set of hot pink notes on graphing linear inequalities from class on, inequalities from class on Tuesday as resources for the work that we're going to do the rest of this week. Um, as a warm-up in class on Tuesday, what we did was we took the four different inequality examples that are on the pink foldable, and I shared this with you when we were doing it yesterday, and we solved each of those for y. So the very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab my example one. As you can see, it's the exact same inequality. When we solved it for y, we wrote it as y is greater than 4x minus three by using strategies to rearrange. What we find out then is the b value is negative three and our slope is four. We're gonna write it as four over one. On my graph, I'm gonna start at negative three on the y-axis, and then I'm gonna use a rise of four and a run of one. One, two, three, four, to the right one. One, two, three, four, to the right one. Now, when graphing inequalities, outside of plotting the boundary line, there's things we have to consider about the boundary line. Is it gonna be dashed or is it gonna be solid? Now, because this was a straight up greater than, we need a dashed boundary line. So we'll take our ruler and create that boundary line around our dots to have a dash side, a dash line. And then it's reading y is greater than. So our y-intercept was sitting at negative 3. It's going to be y values that are bigger than that y-intercept that are going to make our inequality true. So just take your pencil and lightly shade. No sense in making it real dark or goofy or anything. All right, in example 2, when we solved example 2, we got y is less than negative one-half x plus two, and that was right off of our warm-up from Tuesday. I'm going to start by graphing with my b value of two, and then I'm going to use my slope of negative one-half to drop down one and to the right two, down one to the right two. Now, again, this is going to lend itself to a dashed boundary line because I don't have that or equal to. So any solutions, potential solutions that fall on the boundary line would not make this true. They're not included on a dashed boundary line. Cool. And then I'm going to look and say that it reads y is less than. So I'm going to shade everything underneath that y-intercept of 2. y values less than are going to make this true. So anything, any points in my shaded area would be solutions to in this inequality. So going on to example 3. For example 3 and 4, let me go grab my equations that we had for example 3 and 4. For example 3, we rewrote it as y is greater than or equal to negative 2x minus 3. In example 4, we wrote as y is less than or equal to 3x minus 4. Example number three then, my b value is negative three. I'm gonna start at negative three on the y-axis. My slope is negative two. I'm gonna write that over one. And from my b value of negative three, I'm gonna go down two to the right one. Now I could continue that pattern or I could go up two to the left one. I actually couldn't continue the pattern. I ran out of room. Up two and left. Notice how I just put the negative in the denominator. Now the boundary line here is going to be solid because it says that or equal to. Y is greater than or equal to. So I'm going to finish graphing my inequality with a solid line and values of Y need to be shaded above the Y intercept that I had. Perfect. All right, now Last but not least, example number four, I've got a b value of negative four. Start on the y-axis at negative four. I've got a slope of three. I'm going to treat it as three over one. Up one to the right three. Up one to the right three. Again, I'm dealing with a solid line. If you see how these examples are, there was two bound, dash boundary lines up top. Now two solid. And then we have y is going to be less than or equal to 3x minus four. So I'm going to shade underneath where that y-intercept of negative 4 was. So you can take a look at this again at home on your own, but right now you have a nice set of four more examples that can help you with the work that you're going to do in class. Remember, we solved for y on our warm-up in class on Tuesday. And then also on Tuesday, we had this packet of work in practice. Oh, we had one more thing on Tuesday. 
we messed around with this assignment. You might want to have that out to use as reference today as well. Good luck.